In my speech at the Deconomy, I, I covered three topics. Um, the first topic I wanted to cover was what is enterprise blockchain? Um, a lot of the discussion in the conference has been about public blockchains and cryptocurrencies and tokens and crypto economics. So I wanted to also help the, un help the audience understand about blockchains for business, enterprise blockchains. So my first, my first section was explaining how I think R3 thinks they're all about helping businesses in a community, businesses in a market, do their business more efficiently, making sure that when I look at my computer and you look at your computer, if we're trading with each other, that I know for sure that what I see on my computer is what you see on your computer, so that we see the same facts, we're in consensus. You think computers work like that anyway, but they don't. Everybody always sees different things, their computers are not in synchronization. And I was explaining how we think business blockchains can help optimize entire markets. So that was the first thing I covered. The second thing I covered was then to say, well, if that's the opportunity, if the opportunity is to help entire markets or industries get more efficient, insurance, syndicated lending, parts of healthcare, whatever it is, if that's the opportunity, then there's also a problem because the, the, the technologies that influenced us and inspired us Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other technologies. They inspired and influenced us, of course, but they were not designed to help to solve problems for businesses. They're designed to solve other problems. So, so once we understood the opportunity for business blockchains, we then realized as R3 that we needed to build our own blockchain, our own blockchain called Corda, that is designed to address these opportunities and solve these problems. So I talked to the audience about some of the key design features in Corda, about its support for privacy and performance, how it's designed for all the world's developers to make it easy to write applications, how it settles and finalizes transactions immediately. Um, so I explained that and hopefully made them a bit excited about Corda. It's open source, so anybody can download it and use it and, and build solutions with it. So I helped the audience um, uh, hopefully get excited about that. I also talked about some real world usages. I showed how one of the world's largest financial software firms, Finastra, is trying to improve the syndicated loan market using Corda. I talked about how the insurance industry, which is doing lots of blockchain projects, has chosen almost exclusively, almost universally, to build on Corda. So, it, and I also finished by showing how Corda was one of many blockchains a few years ago. It's now one of the top three. And I think the market for business blockchains will consolidate to just Corda, maybe Hyperledger, maybe Ethereum. And then the final thing I talked about was we have to talk about how to connect blockchains together. We call it interoperability. So I talked about how we make that simpler because I think we've made it too complicated. So they were the three topics I covered. You know, what is an enterprise blockchain? Why should people be excited? Why did we design Corda? How does it work? Why is it different? And then how can we work together as an industry to link our technologies together? I think it's important because not everybody will use the same software. Um, some people are deploying Corda, like I said, to, de to solve problems in insurance and banking and healthcare. Other people are deploying Hyperledger Fabric to solve problems perhaps in trade finance, just as we are with Corda. So in the future, there will be lots of successful projects running on different blockchain platforms. And there, there will still be huge amounts of computers running traditional software running on mainframes and, and normal computers. And we need these systems to be able to talk to each other. So, so an example would be, let's imagine there's an, in, an insurance project running on Corda. One of the big insurance projects is called B3i. The letter B, the number three, letter I, B3i. They're solving problems in reinsurance. In the future, they may need to settle claims or settle transactions and make a payment. But the payment might need to happen on a different blockchain or it might need to happen on the normal banking system. So we need to be able to connect these things together. But we need to connect them together in a way that doesn't create new problems or new errors. Because the whole point of blockchain is that we're in consensus. I know for sure that we see the same thing. 
And imagine how annoying it would be if we spend all this time making the insurance industry, for example, work really well and really perfectly. And then as soon as a payment is needed, suddenly everything breaks. And I say, I've paid you. You can't find the money. You think I haven't paid you. We shout at each other and, and everything gets complicated again. We need to make sure the interoperability and the connection is, is so perfect that we never get into disagreement again. And that's why we need to work together as an industry, as a community to, to make sure these linkages are tight and, and correct. So I talked about this in my speech and I think maybe surprisingly, the point I was making was, I think as an industry, we may have been too ambitious. We've been trying to solve the really hardest problems first. We've been trying to perfectly connect two different blockchains to allow assets and information to move perfectly in both directions at the same time. And that is a very good goal. It's an ambitious goal, and it's one that we are working on too. But if we look at what people need today, they actually need something simpler. They just need the ability perhaps to make a payment and know that, it has been know that it has been made correctly. So I think by trying to be too ambitious, we are, we're making it too complicated. So to move more quickly, we should, we should focus on the, the problems of today. Last year, we released some code. We gave it away for free as open source code. It was called Corda Settler. And that was our, our demonstration of a simpler way. So we, we wrote the code and showed people, here is a way to connect Corda to other blockchains. We showed how to connect it to XRP. Now we're working with Swift to show how to connect it to GPI, which is their new, um, their new, new payment system for traditional um, usages. And we showed how to do it in a very simple way. And I think these step-by-step situations, these step-by-step -step paths that are done openly, collaboratively, and with open source, we think that's the key to moving forward. Otherwise, as you say, there will be too many obstacles. So the business improvements we think enterprise blockchains like Corda can give fall into, I think, two categories. Um, the first category I think is really important, but people think it's boring, but I think it's actually really quite exciting. And this first category is all about bringing people into consensus. So there is less duplication, fewer errors, um, fewer mistakes, um, and, 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 and fewer places where people are disagreeing. Because we move to a world where my systems that I run my company on and your systems that you run your company on, they are, they are synchronized. They, they say the same thing. So to give an example, if, 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 if I've lent you money, my system says I've lent you 1 million won, your computer says exactly the same thing. It doesn't say 99999, it says 1 million, mine says 1 million, and call to make sure they stay together. Um, and that will make life simpler. It reduces errors, duplications, and, um, and inconsistencies. And it doesn't sound exciting, but it would reduce so much risk and so much cost for the world's businesses. But there's the second thing as well, which I think is even more exciting, which is if you know that your data is the same as your competitors and your counterparts and your, and your, and your trading partners, if you know for sure that the data you're using is correct and it is up to date, then suddenly a new opportunity arises. You can make business decisions more quickly and with more confidence. Because when you are looking at the data, you know it's correct, you can make a decision quickly, and you then know the transaction has been processed, it's final, and everybody else sees the same thing. So we can do business more quickly, maybe we can take more opportunities in the same time, and maybe even this is the beginnings of, um, of how to move to quicker settlement for trades, or even to enable the tokenization of, of more assets. So reduced cost and inconsistency is one opportunity. The other is you know, faster, more certain decision making. And it's all enabled by moving to applications that the whole market, the whole industry uses that we know are in consistency with each other. Yeah, so, so Corda, is, Corda is the software that the companies um, run um, that, that enables this. And the Corda nodes talk to each other and they, they share the data. We think privacy is building these applications on top of Corda. So with R3, we build Corda, this open source software. 
We have a commercial version too that we can talk about and I will explain in more detail. And then hundreds of partners realize that they can make money, they can make profit by serving their customers using their unique knowledge of a market by building a Corda application. So the Corda nodes are deployed in each firm and then the applications are installed on top and the two things work together to bring everybody into synchronization. It's a good question. So, you know, how much power does R3 have? How, how open is Corda? We, we've worked very hard on this because we agree it is important that Corda is openly openly governed as well as being open source because this will be important software for the whole world and people need to know it's not controlled by one company it has to be it has to be community controlled so so we have done several things so the first one is of course Corda is open source anybody can take the code and if they want they can fork it they can make their own copy and they can change it so if they don't like how R3 runs it they can they can run their own like a hard fork on Ethereum or Bitcoin. However, they can also contribute to Corda. They can submit requests for changes or they can submit code changes. And we have written a contribution guidelines document that says how, they will be, how these contributions will be reviewed. And we've said, provided the code quality meets the right standards and provided it is consistent with the vision for Corda, we will work with the contributor to incorporate it into Corda even if it competes with our commercial version, because we do have a commercial version. And I think we're the only platform that makes that promise. But of course, there is then also the question of networks of Corda nodes. And the important thing here is anybody can run their own network and they would fully control it. But we think the world is better served or best served if there is also a global internet of Corda nodes where all the Corda nodes in the world can talk to each other and information and assets can flow freely. So we have established Corda network, but even here, people need to know that it is not controlled by R3. So we have set up an independent foundation. You can read about it at corda.network. And part of the foundation includes the rules such as who can be on the network. Uh, it even says how the network will be governed and how it will be managed. And that is independent of R3. Because we agree, you know, this is not because we are altruistic or charitable. It's because we know that unless it's openly governed, people won't use it. So we have worked very hard to show that it is open, <laughs> is covered by copyright. Um, and um, R3 owns the copyright to most of the code. So that's a fair question. So what we did there, but again, because we want Corda to be open and we want people to adopt it, is we licensed it under a license called the Apache 2 license. And the Apache 2 license is a very liberal license. It says that anybody who downloads this source code can use it pretty much for any purpose. And not only that, and that's without paying us any money, and not only that, if there are any patents, any patents, any intellectual property associated with Corda, then if you comply with the terms of the license, which is very open and liberal, then you can use those patents as well. The only thing we ask is, please don't sue us for patent infringement. Um, that just makes life difficult. So the Apache 2 license has a, um, has a specific line, but that is a very standard license. We just copied it from, 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 from the standards because it's, um, it's a common license. But, um, but, but, but that's the case. You know, Corda is open source. Anybody can use it, fork it, deploy it. Um, but, your, but your viewers should know we do have a commercial version as well that they can pay for. So you may ask, why would somebody pay for software if it's free? Why would you do that? And, um, and the reason there is, in our commercial version, we have added some extra features that some businesses have asked for um, to make it go a little bit faster and to make it easier to integrate to existing systems that large firms use and a few other features like that. Plus, you can then get 24 seven support. So what we find people do is they begin with open source and smaller firms typically go live on it as well. Larger firms say, you know what? We would like 24 seven support from R3. We would like these extra features. And so they choose to, to pay for the commercial version. But the really important point even there is the commercial version and the free version are compatible. So you can run both versions on the same network. So some people can run the free version, some people can run the commercial version, and they can interoperate with each other that they are compatible. 
and that means people are, are free. If they decide they don't want the commercial version anymore, they can switch back to the free version. And in the future, other firms may say, you know what, we think we can make a good commercial version as well, and they are free to do so. So we think this is a really liberal, open, um, sort of forward-thinking way to, to software. And, and it seems to be working because Corda, as I say, is now one of the top three um, enterprise blockchain platforms in the world. So this is, a really, uh, this is a really hard question to answer because the funny thing with open source is we don't know. So there are, so there are people using Corda because they've downloaded it and then, and then we read um, um, articles on, on websites and, and news services like your own where somebody has gone live and they've issued a press release and we say, wow, somebody else is using Corda and it's another good news story. So there are, so, so there are customers we know of and then there are lots of users we don't know, which is, um, is, is, is great. And and then when we hear about them, we, you know, we offer support, we offer to, to help them out. Um, but we rely on organizations like Gartner who do interviews and research to tell us what our market share is. Um, but the beauty of open source is you never really know. Ah, so so I, I don't know how many, but I know about a large number of people who've told us. So And there are many we are working with. So, so some examples are, I've already talked about B3i, a large insurance consortium who are transforming the reinsurance market with Corda. Just recently, the Swiss stock exchange, SIX6, they have set up something called the Swiss Digital Exchange, which is a brand new, very innovative digital exchange where assets, new assets will be tokenized, existing assets will be tokenized. And after a very detailed um, assessment, they chose Corda. There is a startup called HQLAX that is tokenizing government bonds using Corda. There are projects such as Marco Polo and Voltron who are, who are optimizing trade finance. There's oil and gas being, um, being um, um, managed on Corda in Canada. Um, there are examples all over the world of, of people who are building on it. There are remittances from Saudi Arabia to India. Um, I, the, the, there are so many that we know about. And in fact, um, one place your viewers may, may, may like to look is a website called Marketplace r3.com that lists hundreds of partners who are, who are working with Corda or building on it. And, and what I'd say is, you know, if you're using Corda, if anybody watching this video is using Corda, get in touch and we can add you to that website too. Business landscape is one where everybody in the world is using Corda. Um, but of course, you know, even, even in my ambitious dreams, not everybody will use it. So, so my ambitious business landscape is one where every market, every decentralized market that isn't yet optimized moves to enterprise blockchain. The majority of them do so on Corda. They achieve really good benefits for themselves and for their clients who are ultimately paying for this. And then we begin to see interoperability between these networks. People join things like Corda Network and we see assets, tokens, cash created on one, net, one business network flow to another one. And suddenly these silos and walls between businesses and industries begin to break down. And we see a far more easy and simple flow of data and assets and information between people. You know, we've, we've reduced errors and inconsistencies. We've created new opportunities. Um, and we look back and say, wow, the first 60 years of the IT industry were all about optimizing individual firms. Maybe the next generation of IT with products like Corda and enterprise blockchains are all about moving from optimizing businesses to optimizing entire industries and markets. You know, that's, that's my vision. That, that's what we're working for here at R3.